will CETA and ICS apply to or affect the new climate and biodiversity bill? Yeah, it, we know that um, these kind of mechanisms have had an impact on climate legislation. I would imagine that it would be unlikely uh, to be fully ratified across Europe by the time the new climate bill would go through. But what I would be really concerned with is, you know, with this new climate bill, every five years or so, we're meant to be coming up with new action plans and um, with new strategies, is that, you know, the climate bill is going to set these targets, but that when we come up with the five-year plans in order to deliver those kind of reductions in emissions, that all of those policies, the policies that are actually going to get us to reduce emissions, that they could get they could um, get undermined. So while you know the fact of the climate bill existing is unlikely to get challenged, I do think there is that the policies which will deliver the targets in the climate bill, each of them, the, the, the kind of the legislation that might be needed, the fact that you know how ambitious we make our targets in the future and every five years, I think that would be impacted. And I do think it's really important to say in general, climate law, climate law is going to be also evolving constantly with these new EU targets because the EU has set much more ambitious targets than Ireland has. So all of that new EU legislation as well would become vulnerable to these measures and our national implementation of new EU directives. And one of the areas, just as one example, an area where we really lack laws, we need to have a lot more laws around areas like biodiversity and regulation on areas like biodiversity. And that's an area where I would be really worried that we could see challenges um, from companies. Um, and I guess it's just that, you know, somebody else I saw, I think it's important that we look, that we do, do take that kind of example. So, you know, rather than just constantly, you know, lobbying your public representatives in terms of stopping ICS and CETA, I think it's important to push them. like. What could it mean for this legislation? What could it mean for home care regulation? What's going to mean in terms of uh, public contracts on um, and direct provision? You know, all of those issues that have been highlighted, because it, the onus is actually on those who are proposing the ratification of CETA and the introduction of investor court system. The onus is on them to convince you that there will they will not be. You know, you should be looking for written and guarantee you know, sworn statements that they will never, ever be chilled and that there will never, ever be a chill effect. And they need to show, and this is something NASA Hurricane has pointed out really well, I think, they need to show that they've done risk proofing. And Jennifer Whitmore, actually, Deputy Whitmore, that there's been risk proofing, that literally you've almost gone through the legislative agenda of all the legislation you plan to pass in the next four or five years, and you've looked at exactly how CETA could impact each piece of it. That's a piece of work that hasn't happened yet at all. I'm going to just add one more thing in the climate bill. Sure, it's sure. really important that we don't have a kind of a narrative of a trade-off, you know, because I've heard that used. Literally, you know, it is the context on climate, you know, that I, we've heard like, oh, we're going to get a good climate bill, so we should just go ahead with CETA. There, there cannot be no trade-offs on this. The climate bill is its own commitment. It's its own thing. It's its own battle. We've all worked to strengthen it. That needs to be delivered. And in fact, one thing I think it's really important to do is to really put pressure on for that to be published soon so that it doesn't kind of stay in some back room kind of maybe it'll happen. That should be on the table because it's a lot, it's going to be a lot harder for that to be diluted once it's been actually published. So I think that needs to be published really soon. It's really important. But also CETA is about the big picture. It's about our legislation in Ireland. We focused on that, but it's also around internationally do we give momentum and energy to this model? And in a way, Ireland is a small country because I am also concerned of Ireland with a lot of brass plate companies being used to sue other countries, to sue can Canadian provinces that try to ban fracking or do good environmental policies. You know, we, we would also be a base that could be used in taking cases um, because, um, you know, we know that some, I think Lorna made a really good point about substantive, business interests, you know, we have a lot of companies based in Ireland who could take cases against others around the world. So I think we have to think about our own legislation and also the impact on others. And just your question on the negative list. Well, unfortunately, the negative list was already negotiated. Uh, that is, you know, this really weird feature with CETA where it's, um, it's what they call the negative list where 
you know, normally in a trade deal, you just put stuff on the table and you say, let's talk about this. And here's my fish and your, you know, hats, whatever. <laughs> but, it, but in the case of CETA, it was a negative system. So everything that you didn't explicitly take off the table is assumed to be included. And most countries across Europe um, and others, you know, Canada has pages and pages and pages of things that it took off the table. Ireland has just five pages, uh, just three pages with, I think, five items of things that we took off the table. Um, the nether, uh, the, the, the Denmark and Germany had 20 pages or more, you know, literally pages and pages of items they took off the table. So they, th this is what they call reservations. So they made loads of reservations, loads of areas that they don't want to be subject to CETA. In Ireland, as I said, five main items, Really interestingly, the Law Society and the King's Inn are two of the five items because lawyers <laughs> made a very important point to make sure that their institutions and their educational institutions wouldn't be subject to CETA. So the very fact that they made a point of making sure they were included shows that they understood what, how serious the implications were. Unfortunately, that negative list or that reservations list is already filed, it's closed, we've missed our opportunity. And why I think it's really important is, it's a reminder of why we need scrutiny. There was no debate in the Oireachtas about what should we put on the table, what should we take off the table. It wasn't discussed at a committee, it got no scrutiny. And I think that's one of the really strong arguments to say, that's why we really need to be discussing the investor court system and what it means because we did actually drop the ball and the government dropped the ball um, on the negative list.